this game is very important for our season. It's one of the biggest rivalries in college football. So we're in a good place, but man, everybody's got to be a little bit better. Street. This place is absolutely insane. Welcome to Countdown to College Game Day presented by Samsung QLED TV. We're coming to you live for the first time ever on Beale Street in Memphis. This place is hyped. This is the M Day's fourth new location of the year. This is a big AAC matchup between SMU and, and Memphis. Obviously, this crowd's been here all night. This crowd's been here all morning. They opened up the bars early just to hang out with us. This is the first. I mean, for all my game day experiences, this is the first. For the first time ever, they've opened up just to make sure everybody stays warm. I'm sure it's just to make sure everybody stays warm. This place is absolutely ridiculous. We're live on Twitter, the YouTube app, ESPN app. You know how to hang out with us every single week. They've been here. They've been getting ready. Look at this going. Look at it. Herb Street is the king of Beal. Herb Street's the king of Beal. I mean, that, that, that's pretty strong. Like, Herbie is the king. We got a championship belt. All right, so did you already have the championship belt, or did you get the belt for this? No, I got the belt for this. It's all love for Memphis. Thank you. I mean, let's be honest. When you look around what we see here, this is the first time ever. This is huge, huge for Memphis. So, like, you got the 901. Like, like, what's it mean for the 901 to be represented on game day, man? Stay like this for the whole entire city of Memphis. Black, white, and green, and orange. Now, 901, period one, blank, man. 901, Tiger, baby. Uh, and, then, and then this, we've seen a lot of this sign. We're going to see a lot of this sign. The number one team in Tennessee. I mean, he's not wrong. Vandy stinks. Tennessee's not any good. Memphis, number one, right? Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Yeah. Run. I mean, this, this is what I'm talking about. We're going right through this. Obviously, we're hanging out live on Beale Street. I I'm see not, him. I'm not hanging out by myself. We're navigating uncharted territory. Hurry up, Fitz. We're Hurry just up. Walking through the cheerleaders. I don't know where we're going. Oh, Fitz. All right, I'm, go I'm just walking right through everybody. Pick up Fitz. Put him, on, put him on the top you of the pyramid. What? You know what? I was having my moment. <laughs> I was having my moment. We are joined now. Oh, this is the thing. I'm standing in between you two. Yeah, okay. come on. Too much height right here. Pat yeah. McAfee, David Pollock, Mac. This is your first time. Patty Mac. That, how do, do we like that nickname? Pat yeah, Patty Mac isn't bad. Easy Mac, D Mac, you got it. But today, Memphis Mac. Let's have a morning here, Fitz. Memphis Mac. Uh, yeah. This is the 901. If you if you had to rate the moments in your career, getting to hang out with me and Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I have high. never spoke live on the internet with a fiddle player. And now I'm talking with one of the greats of all time. And handsome Pollock looks like he's whittling away. He's 130 pounds. And this crowd in Memphis has been electric for the last seven hours I already. mean, it, it has. I the mean, bars this, are open. They, they they're ready open, to roll. They opened Beale Street early. I didn't even know that was a possibility, right? So the question is, how when you think about the bars here, are we? Are, are they trickling in and out? Is this, it's just staying warm, or you think they're all just going to stick here for the rest of the day? I was talking to a couple of the kids here, and they said it was a marathon, but they're doing it at a sprinting pace. <laughs> so I think the fact that game day has come to Memphis in the American Conference, I think Memphis is going to take advantage of it. They've been walking on Beale Street. They've been stumbling on Beale Street, and I think this is going to be an electric morning. Well, and talk about a couple years ago when this program was cutting the seats in half and wondering what the heck's going on, and now college game day's here. The stadium sold out for the first time. I mean, so now you got something to get super excited about. It's just, it's an awesome moment for them. Yeah, and right. by the way, the game's going to be awesome. I mean, there's going to be plenty of points. Yes. It's, and every Memphis game you watch, you have no clue what's going to happen, but something fun is going to happen. What do you think the level in there? Because the rumor mill was circulating we might come to Memphis. All I'm thinking about is last week, Tulsa, end of the game, going for the game when he kicked the level of puckered up from Memphis fans had to be at a square tag. Well, and also SMU now, right? SMU was playing Houston. That came down to the fourth quarter. Both of these teams knew. The guys in the booth sucked for that game. It's terrible, a horrible game. Absolutely terrible. Absolutely but they horrible. knew that a chance of game day's appearance right here in Memphis, Tennessee was on the line, and both teams made it happen. 
Well, I, I want to go back to something that happened Thursday night. Countdown to game day. It's the first time we get to hang out with Pat McAfee and David Pollock together. And I, I can't, yeah, I mean, Billy Bennett, obviously, love you, Billy, but uh, LSU, it was one of those things where we, we missed three field goals, and it was kind of a big deal. And listen, this is a sport that is about testosterone and Ooh. beating people up for 60 minutes. I'm not a big fan when it comes down to a guy that plays soccer on the other field the whole game, okay? I can, I can understand that, but it's called football for a reason. And I can understand how meatheads like yourself don't love the dainty kickers who are the super alphas of the team. Super alphas. Come out and put the team on their back. And a lot of things, by the way. Whenever kickers miss very easy kicks and they look scared, yeah. I hate it as well. I missed a couple kicks in college, cost a lot of incredibly alpha males, a lot of victory and celebration, so that's on me. But that's why it's the greatest team sport in all of the world. I mean, you've got a big guy that can play, fat guys can play, little skinny guys, guys can, can play, play, skinny guys can play. That is why Fast football, guys can play. Slow guys can play. Yeah. And that's why football is the greatest sport on earth, especially college football, whenever things like this are starting to happen. The greatest thing that you guys don't know is I didn't tell either of them we were doing that off the top. I just wanted to Yeah, you kind of set that, that up. We, 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 it's all good. This yeah. is what I do. You know, yeah. I just sort of stir things up. Speaking of stir things up, I saw sign and I've seen a couple versions of it walking up here it said Memphis number one team in the state of Tennessee yeah! <laughs> now let's acknowledge sorry Nashville I lived in Nashville for 20 years Vandy stinks yeah Tennessee's uh you know they've had they're, maybe they're trying to rise I'm about to say, Tennessee's got it right they, they look like they have a Tennessee looks like they have a direction now. You have to give them credit for that. Yeah, but the first seven weeks, I mean, they stuck. It was awful. And good old Rocky Top is always going to be the talk of the town. You've got the greats like Peyton Manning coming out of there, that electric orange down there in Knox, Vegas, and all that stuff. Power T. Vanderbilt is awesome. Nashville, beautiful city. But Memphis, I think for the first time in a long time, should embrace the hell out of the fact that not only is their football team great, Basketball team is good. Any Hardaway, baby, let's this go. Is becoming the sports town of Tennessee, and you got to feel good about it. Yeah, I think that's one thing we have to capture today is that this isn't just a football moment. Their basketball oh. team is one of the best in the country. Speaking of football oh, moments, Coach Corso is up there. Pat, you were around the WWE last night. You know what it means to work a crowd. Watch this. What a legend Coach Corso is. Every week. I mean, every I, week. I feel it's like amazing. You were around the WWE last night. Like, give a give a rating to Coach. I just swear, ten, right? Listen, it's Coach Cor uh, Coach Corso for decades now has been the most electrifying figure on television. When he does the helmet, I normally watch it through Kirk Herbstreet's Twitter, getting a chance to see it live and to feel the emotion of the fans. When he kissed the Tiger helmet, I mean, it's just a beautiful moment of what makes college game day college game day. I'm going to drag you guys with me. We're going to go talk to it. somebody. We have to. Excuse us, excuse us, excuse us. They're coming through. I got to talk to this guy. Yeah. Like, when you think about this guy, there are wow. so many questions about like this. It. Like, you feel, you, this feels good, but the question is, did you already own the number one, or did you make a number one specific for this broadcast? I uh, already had it. You already uh, had it? Created the blue stripes and all that stuff. Yeah. Why, so why did you have it? Um, it was for a church event. Okay. Oh, that's okay. awesome. Super that's good guy. Nice. One of the nicest guys <laughs> ever. <laughs> God bless you, pal. Nice. I mean, honestly. So you already had the one, and you were like, hey, game day's coming, so I'm going to put the stripes on it. Oh, I mean, sure, yeah. Okay, and what time did you get here tonight, uh, last night? 2.30 uh, this morning. 2.30 this morning. All right. Nice. All right. Yeah. It, is, it is, oh, look at that. And we got win or lose, at least we aren't Tennessee. Tennessee. I'm telling you, the left side, strong side. Memphis Knoxville hate, like the Memphis Knoxville hate, is real. So oh, it's, real. Uh, uh, it's real. It's real. Uh, is it like is it community wide? Like talk to me. Oh, about this. definitely, definitely. Okay. We well, don't we hate Tennessee? Yeah. Don't we hate Tennessee? Yeah. Oh, this guy this. just came out of church. Uh, this guy's bashing Tennessee. I love this place. Yeah. The only thing Mustangs are good for. Yeah. I mean, this is strong artwork, by the way. This is. Did you draw this yourself? I did, yes, sir. Nice. Did you use a stencil for the letters? I did not. <laughs> I kid lied right so, to your face right there. Wow. I'm just saying. And, and he said, I'm, yes, sir. So I'm just, just uh, yeah. Manners are amazing around here. The, the biggest thing for somebody that can't even color in the lines is that that, that line work is so perfect. Like, it's not surprising to anybody. Well, you, didn't, you didn't want to incorporate this one? Win or lose. What? Win or lose. At least we don't have to live in. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I like seeing a little bit of this.
this too, I'm not gonna I mean, lie. From the crowd, wait, let's get the reaction from the people here. There's a sign in front that says, win or lose, at least we don't have to live in Memphis. What do you think of that? <laughs> That's a bold, we'll keep walking signs in a minute. Bold we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep the magic going with some people. There's some good signs over there we'll get to. But in the meantime, in the meantime, I want to keep talking to you guys about Memphis football because as much as we talk about Memphis football today, let's also acknowledge there are some NFL players that we watch every Sunday right now that have had success that have come from this program. Let's start with Dantari Poe, somebody that obviously wow. had a huge career here. It's a massive human being. Yeah, spent uh, he he's spent some Sundays uh, absolutely destroying my beloved Raiders as he was uh, picked by the Chiefs, had a huge career. Obviously, he's one of the big stars that we can look at uh, that, that's making it in the NFL. From massive Memphis. human being. As an athlete. You've also got Paxton Lynch, somebody that's uh, drafted 26 overall by the Broncos. Paxton threw for 3,776 yards, 28 touchdowns as a junior. I mean, absolutely incredible success here. Did go on to the NFL. I know that the Broncos necessarily didn't find what they were looking for, but he's managed to take it to the next level. Anthony Miller, somebody that left school as Memphis's all-time leader in receiving yards with 3,590 in three, seven, three seasons. My man also had 37 touchdowns, including 18 in his senior season. He had 18 jukes on that play, too. Mitchell oh Trubisky God. can't get him the ball. I mean, they, yeah. Well, is, let's see what it's yeah. like. And then speaking Eight. of somebody that gets the ball, Daryl Henderson is somebody I spent every single Saturday last year talking about on the college football show on Twitter. He is somebody that absolutely deserved to be in the Heisman conversation with the route with the, the career he had last year. Playing for the Rams now, so I didn't. I didn't get that show. When was that show you did? I did the show? college football show last oh, year. It's, it's, oh, a little plot there. Oh, yeah, up there. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Smart. I didn't Thank know. you very much. This is only the beginning. Who's this guy? Uh, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm going through things in order here, oh, David. Okay. Let things. Hey, happen. he made me cry last week in. Uh, Steve Wojcicki oh, joining us. Casey. Those jorts are making me cry. I'll tell you what. I walked into the production meeting at game day. I had 45 different looks. They're trying to find me pants. Nothing's open yet. So let the calves breathe here in Memphis, <laughs> Tennessee. Can, can, the question is the sport coat with the calves. Like, is that a usual like, it, yeah. like business on the front and party? Business on top, party on the bottom. Party on the bottom. All of outfits for sure. <laughs> and I don't think there's any other place in the world that this outfit, this costume would play than right here on Beale Street. They respect good fashion here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. Gene Wojciechowski joins us. Gene, we wanted you to come on because you uh, you had a feature on Because I'm a Tennessee grad and that will go over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't going to say Tennessee. that. Yeah. I yeah. wasn't going to say I that. I saw the hate, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to remember it. This kid hates you. Yes. Right I'm going to remember this. Oh, man. Well, you a couple of weeks ago had a feature on game day about SMU because this is a program that's sort of come from the bottom. And now, obviously, they're a big part of why we're here also. They've, they've managed to turn things around tremendously. Yeah, it wasn't the bottom. It was like negative integers. I mean, they were below ground. They, they were the school that got the death penalty. Their program was shut down for two years. Nobody knew if it would ever come back. And somehow it has. It's taken years, decades but they put it together. Taking a lot of coaches, a lot of players, a lot of bad times, but here they are. And you have to respect, you have to respect how they've come back. Well, and the cool thing is, you know, they got the death penalty and so they went away for a while and that was the old school Memphis, but the new school football has kind of helped the transfers really. They got 16 transfers on this team. They built this team. Now it's a, it's a great place to be able to come back to Dallas and this area, the area where they live. So many high school, so much high school talent. Yeah. Kids leave, they go try their hands. Shane Bichelle, the quarterback at Texas, come back to SMU, and now it's just going to build on itself. So I don't think SMU's going anywhere either. I got a chance to call SMU's last game there, and talking to Coach Dykes, the way he described Shane Bouchelle was a transformer of the franchise, basically, a transformer of the organization. When he came from Texas, in the spring, he wasn't even a full-time SMU student yet. He was living in the apartments of the other players so he can get adapted to the Mustangs' way. Reggie Robertson, who came from West Virginia, transferred back into his hometown yep. of Dallas. He had been the man who had been connecting everybody. They're like, what's it like at SMU? Reggie would tell everybody, it's awesome. Coach Dykes is building something. This SMU Mustangs team knows about the past. Hey, everybody's seen the 30 for 30, but I think they're embracing the hell out of the fact that they're all the way back right now. Rhett Lashley on that offensive side of the ball is running an incredible offense, and Coach Dykes is really leading a good team down there at SMU. And I think you've made a great point about the transfers. The number of transfers that come into SMU this year is really substantial. It's one of the moments where the transfer portal can be a great advantage for a school that is trying to rebuild or a school that's trying to get to the number level. We talk a lot about the transfer portal in a negative. This is the transfer portal working in a tremendous positive. Coach Dykes said that he was kind of indifferent about it. He 
didn't love oh, he's it. He's embraced it now, though. Yeah, but now <laughs> he's all about it, you're bro. You're Shane Bouchelle, you get some weapons on your team, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, this transfer portal can turn around a team very quickly. And well, the Mustangs are a perfect depiction of that. And, and it's, it's interesting because they have an entire campaign there about keeping the local guys home. Billboards everywhere, hometown team, but they also use the transfers to supplement that roster. A lot of those guys didn't know about the death penalty and never considered it. They weren't even alive you. yet. I, they the weren't even alive yet. The 30 taught everybody yes. that. But they didn't even consider SMU at the time. But guys like Cushell, who was recruited by SMU and just said, no, I'm going to Texas. Now those guys are coming back and thinking about SMU as a first choice not as a possible choice. So Gene Wojcicki, you have a feature today on strength coaches in college football. I don't think either of us know anything about strength coaches, but I will ask you, was there one to- Who are you talking to? You. Uh, I, I will ask you, is there one, is there, is there one, uh, one specific moment that stood out to you in the feature today that we should all keep an eye well, on? This guy knew everything about strength coaches. He had a key to the Georgia strength locker room, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Might have been the only player that did. No, the piece is about sort of the power of the strength coach and how he can define, build, and be the difference in a football program. And I will say, I can't make, I mean, the, I, the fact great. that you just lumped yourself in with him is, yeah. just, is just funny. You're on your own island, bro. Yeah, you're on your own island. The strength coach is the most important coach of an entire team. I mean, they're with the players the most. I had a chance to be with Mike Barwis. The first time I lifted a weight, was at West Virginia. You didn't in high school at all? Not at all. Soccer player, man. Everything you said earlier was 100% accurate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, Mike Barwis is like one of the main reasons why I made it, had a chance to make a living. Mike Joseph as well. The strength coach is a vital part of every team. I can't wait to see what Gene does. He made me try last week. I assume he's going to have me ready to run through a damn wall. <laughs> There's a whole section on jorts. Uh, I guess that's, that's the best section. Yeah. Gene, thanks for no, having me. There will be a part. section on tight <laughs> shirts and tight <laughs> shirts. Uh, no doubt about that. By the way, little known fact, Pollock, my new strength coach. They gave you some workouts. Thank you. I'm trying to help him out, bro. I'm a weekend. Well, it ain't working. Weekend. Damn, yeah. I'm a weekend. <laughs> it ain't All working right. yet. Speaking of me, every week uh, I have the opportunity scene. to, uh, to, awesome. to break down four things, a, a ranking of sorts, let's say. Something to look out this weekend. It is time for Fitz's Big Four, brought to you by Samsung QLED TV. Check this out. It's time for Fitz's Big Four. This week, we take a look at the top four games this weekend that will impact the New Year's six bowl games. We will start at number four on the list. That's number nine, Utah at Washington. Utah needs to win out, and they need USC to lose just to get into the Pac-12 championship game. The problem is, while they might be playing the best football in the Pac-12, they don't have a signature win this year or a win that can get the taste of the USC loss out of their mouths. At this point, they need to win, and they need to win big with style as they go through the Pac-12 schedule. Speaking of the Pac-12, Utah not the only one on this list. Next up on the list, number seven, Oregon at USC. Oregon fans, let's be real, they're still puckered up after last week's close call against Washington State. And Oregon State losing didn't help the remainder of their schedule very much. Oregon fans and Utah fans, ironically, are sort of praying for the same thing. They want both teams to crush everybody left on their schedules so they can get to the Pac-12 championship game and try and make a statement there. By the way, Oregon, 63.7% chance to win, according to our advanced metrics. That brings us to number two on the list, SMU at Memphis. SMU number 15, remember, the best of the group of five gets a New Year's Six Bowl bid. The highest ranked group of five team right now is Memphis or is SMU, but they're visiting a tough Memphis squad. You're talking about a team that's made a bowl game five straight years. You're talking about a team that's only lost once at home since 2017, and that was to UCF. Don't sleep on Memphis, the team that lost a couple of big running backs to the NFL, and they just continue to reload. That brings us to the top of the list. Georgia and Florida, are we allowed to talk about this game without making Florida Georgia line references? Not when you know this is how we roll. You're welcome. We're just starting. Holy cow, there's a lot on the line in this game. Most notably, the winner hopes to cruise into the SEC championship game where they are, where they hope it's meant to be that they can stay hot, they can lay their opponent in the dirt and bring an SEC title home to God, your mama, and me. That was smooth. That's all the references I can get in. Tell us what you think. At Jason Fitz, that's our four. <laughs> References. Come on now, like. Do, hey, you ever see the countdown doing too much? <laughs> okay. First of all, you guys need to step off the stage. Hey, hey, hey. 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 I think hey. I got this one. Hey. You got it. You got this one. Hey. Looking like this is turned in now. Hey. Oh. This is a banger. Okay, what were you saying? This is a. I don't know. Set it up. I'll tell you this. 
This is like the third time I've seen this this morning. Get the yeah. pom -pom I love it. <laughs> Get the pom poms. Look at this guy over here holding a megaphone. We, we separated you. We separated you. We, we took it from the girls. Sorry. Yeah, yeah that's our fault. You said something about the Pac-12. You were talking oh, about no, the Pac-12 is playing football. I think we were talking yeah. about. <laughs> You just lost all hope right there. Breaking news, the Pac-12. Sorry about that. They're playing football. And by they're, the way, that's what the Pac-12 says, by the way. A song comes on and they get forgotten about. <laughs> that is basically what the Pac-12 has been saying. Or, or everybody goes to sleep when, they, when the so big games are yes, on. It's so late. late. But what our stats and info people showed was that the upsets that have created more room in the top four haven't created yeah. an increased playoff chance for the Pac-12. It's increased the playoff chance for two teams from the Big Ten or from the SEC. Now, yeah. they, they have smarter metrics than, than I do. But that's a statement to what it is right now for the Pac-12, what they're up against. First of all, those numbers are terrible most of the time. Anyways, I don't listen to those so you hate numbers stats regardless. Guys and kickers. Not a stats guy, not a kicker. But, but besides that, either way, a loss by somebody like Oklahoma helps them. I mean, think about if, if Baylor gets a few losses, it would help them because Oklahoma can be in a position where who do they beat this year? Who you point to? And they lost to Kansas State. So I think they need everybody. I, they need all kinds of help. But that doesn't hurt when somebody loses, that's for sure. Let's stick there for a second, by the way, because the, we're going to get our first rankings this week on Tuesday. Oh, rankings big reaction you can check out right here everywhere you digitally stream. Rankings reaction will come with you. That's me and Michael Oluk Jr. and special guests. I don't know. I'm just plugging my other show. So anyway, uh, as, as we look at the top four, we all agree it's going to be LSU, uh, Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson in some particular order. Well, three have a bye. So, and then Clemson plays Wofford. So, yes, I, it will be in that some order, some way, shape, or form. And that idol team has to battle every week. And BYE might take care of business. Yeah, we don't know. BYE gonna... could, could beat all three of them. But I think those four, in any particular order, nobody will be surprised. My number five team, by the way, Minnesota. Row the boat. Let's get the Gophers in a little bit more of a conversation piece, Mr. Pollock. So, you just want to stir up stuff. That's really how you yeah. <laughs> Row the boat. It has, wow. nothing to, it has nothing to do with football, but no, I'm yeah, it does. I watch every Look at that. He's going for it. I'm going to walk you guys over to the other side. We're just, I don't know if we're allowed to. Are we going, are we going to the SMU side? Yeah, we're going over to the SMU side. We're going to hang out. Reese is getting everybody pumped up as he does every single week. The commissioner will speak. Look how handsome he is. He will address uh, the I, Listen. I'm, I'm coming. He will address the yes. Reese getting the crowd pumped up. Tiger just showed up. You guys are killing it. Let's kick some butt all morning. What do you say? I like it. Kick some butt. Oh, I am That's the fired. Oh. That's the leader there. Walking on the field. Doesn't swear. No. Just commit. Proper gentleman. So we're, we're going to cut through the cheerleaders here. Sorry. We're cutting through you guys. We're cutting through you guys. This was my favorite sign that you guys had to see. Don't worry, son. Y'all are never scheduling them again. As we've got Memphis. <laughs> I mean, who came up with the sign? Is this yours? Yeah. Yes. Okay, this is awesome. Where did the idea come from? Uh, we were at this game. This was one of the biggest plays. We stopped them on fourth down. And uh, I think it was Jackson Dillon. They came in and did this to Mr. Kendichi. And Ole Miss won't schedule us anymore. Well, Especially not in the Liberty Bowl. I've seen a few different signs that say, we want Bama. Alabama saying we want Memphis. Oh, <laughs> it is going to be fired up. Are you all fired up for what it means to have game day here? All right, any big predictions for this game? We're almost out of time. Any a big lot of points. A lot of fun. A lot of that's. SMU might run 700 plays tonight, but I like Memphis at home in front of this drunk crowd in the Liberty Bowl. I think it's going to be a big one. You make a great point about pace of play. I'll tell you right now, keep hanging out. Game day is going to be coming at you. We will be here every week, but in the meantime, stick around. Game day coming up next right here. Thanks for hanging out with us.
Game day, live from Memphis, Tennessee, is built by the Home Depot, proud sponsor of college football's premier pregame show. They've got their first sellout at the Liberty Bowl since 2015. Uh -oh. oh no! They may need they may need to build some more seats because if this seems any indication, they may tear that place down. <laughs> <laughs> the of rock and roll. And they got them all shook up out here, too. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> They've been going since last night, some of them. I don't know, right? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't shut it down. No, sir. Look at that. This I is mean, a nonstop party here. Wow. This is the 901. They had a flash sale for tickets for $9.01. Okay. Tribute to their home area code. Sold 10,000 of those. Booster bought the rest of the tickets. Made sure that all the faculty and staff had some time to go. That and was man, smart, man, though. That was real smart. It's going to be the scene. Yeah. Right. Oh, College Game Day's first trip to Memphis and Field Street. Hey, Field Street, you ready for it? Look at this. Holy cow. This is like a modern drop yeah. in Memphis. Reminds me of the draft uh, in yeah, Nashville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. A lot like yeah. that. And they right. love being compared to Nashville here. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Davis, Desmond Howard, Kirk Murphy, and Lee Corso. Hey, you know, 50 years ago, yeah. you were here in Memphis. Yeah. You had a little moment yeah. where, where you waved the white towel well, in the game. I, I was a coach in Louisville, and, then the, and Memphis beat yeah. me 69 to 17. And then they beat me by 50 points. So I went a towel and said, we surrender school party. <laughs> I give up, I give up. Oh, man. Long day. What? You can score 17, though. Yeah, yeah. but then, Hey, you was 3-1 and one against Memphis all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's yeah, yeah. nothing. Yeah. Say nothing. Yeah. Hey, this is a great scene. You're in yeah. 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 It's no wonder these fans are excited to see SMU in town. Memphis has beaten SMU five times in a row by an average eight by scoring an average of 50 points per game. No wonder they want to see the other guys here. Yeah, I mean, hey, huh? go Tigers, go, go, go Tigers. Tigers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, just, yeah. It's just one of these scenes where, you know, you know, next week we'll be in Tuscaloosa, traditional setup, but here game yeah. day last week, we're in Brookings, South Dakota. Right, right. This <laughs> week we're here in Memphis, man. It just reminds you what makes this sport so great. So many different levels. This is a big time game, too, tonight on ABC. Like, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Being here, it's like, when we went to Fargo, we were yeah. down yeah. Yeah. Same That's right. It's very similar to that yeah. same feel, and the hospitality has just been through the roof, yeah. off the charts. Glad we're here in Memphis. No doubt. Giving them a three-hour infomercial. Yep. Listen to them chanting. I mean, they're ready. They're ready for us. They've got a really good team. This American conference is growing in terms of its depth here. You know, four of the top five teams in the country are all there. Here's what you're waiting for, Beale Street. Freddie White and the Tigers battle on offense. Kenneth Gainwell, the seventh leading rusher in the nation. I tell you, Xavier Jones, top 15 in rushing, fourth in rushing touchdown. Missman, or Memphis, I should say, has been vulnerable to the run. And Shane Bouchel can spin the magic beam, but he might be without a big-time weapon for that explosive offense of Sonny Dykes. The SMU head coach is with Tom Renault. Tom, Sonny, thank you. Memphis Hall will join us a little bit later on in College Game Day. Here are the headlines. 
you know, there's a couple of tough road games for both of those teams are trying to stay alive in yeah. Pac-12. Well, Ryan Day, the head coach at Ohio State, is going to join us later on in college game. I know you guys noticed another thing that came up this week was the NCAA announcing yeah. that they were ready to allow players to capitalize monetarily on their name, image, and likeness. I just wonder, this is not a done deal. This is just the next move in the chess match. There's legislation on both the state and federal level. There are court cases to go on. There's no tangible outcome yet, so don't, don't look at this as, yeah. hey, we're done, we're gonna pay the players. We're not there yet. <laughs> not all, there. Long way to go. A lot of lawsuits. <laughs> yeah, it's a little more complex <laughs> yeah. than that. And this phrase, I got you, bro. Those four words carry huge significance to Memphis freshman running back Kenneth Gainwell and his older brother, Curtis. It's all coming up on game day. Des, I'm in Memphis. Oh, you're killing yeah. the game. You're killing the game. Look at that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You knocked me down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> stay off my bush weight shoes, kid. Hey, hey, hey. hey. College game day is built by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. And in part by Pizza Hut, official pizza of college football. No one out pizzas the hut. I'm not feeling stepping on the king singing now. No, just, just sit back and... Enjoy the king of the crowd. You know what? That's the greatest instrument ever created. That was Presley's voice. Amen. The best. Hey, never caught a rabbit. <laughs> you ain't no friend of mine. You, you know what? I don't care. He probably could catch a rabbit now, but that David Pollock, a good friend, is here. <laughs> what about this scene? You saw the dance off earlier between the tiger and Pretty the Pretty awesome. There. I gave it to the you tiger. Tiger had tiger. tiger I head. think had the uh, the, tiger the win. Tiger. I gave him the win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could, so could foreshadow what happens tonight. Yes, exactly. <laughs> with, <laughs> yeah. Memphis and yeah, as you just said. Yeah, I think that, that's a lock there. All right. Uh oh, bear. <laughs> what bear. What? That is, what does that sign say? What is that? Corporate made. You can find the difference between the pictures. See the grizzly and the bear. Oh, wow. Clever. I'm a teddy bear. I'm not a grizzly bear. You're a teddy bear until about 11 o'clock, and then you're a grizzly bear. You're a, you're a, you're a, you're a grizzly bear. You don't get sleep. Shut it down. Bear. That's correct. Bear. That's hostile. How, how, about, how about middle seat situation oh. on 22? Yeah. No. If you ever see Bear on a flight, don't touch his chair. Don't, don't, don't even, don't even think yeah, about grabbing the back of my I've seat. I've heard about it. Don't grab the back of the yeah, seat to, to get, get up. up. Yeah. You, you, you do, that, do this to get up. You know, you, know, yeah. you don't need to pull through that. Just, just do this. You got to arm, arm your chair bear, right there. What do you do Airplane you, etiquette right there. If they grab your seat to get up, what do you do? You get the glare and a little mumble under the breath. Don't do that. Who's going to stand up? Who's coming up at the end of the night and after Memphis SMUs, who have Brady White's able to do. Also, Michael Leeds and Zubin Mahente will have UFC 244, Masvidal Diaz post fight coverage. Herbie will be there. Biggest Week 10 takeaways. Sports Center coming up after boxing on ESPN and the ESPN app. Man, on Beale Street, this is one of the great destinations in America. You get a vibe. It's like a Bourbon Street, Vegas yeah. kind of vibe sometimes. Happens on Beale Street. <laughs> oh, hey, that's behind the set. Checking in section zero here, sharing a coke with Javon Bass. Javon's a freshman in the Memphis marching band. He plays trombone, welcoming him here to college game day. Hey, look, Javon, what a great story he is. He and his sister became a boat patient to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. He's completed treatment for leukemia three times. Here we go, Javon. Wish you all the best. He is joining us on college game day. in the middle of everything from the patio porch and look at the college football playoff national championship trophy brought to you by dr pepper that is the goal that is the goal for everybody we i 
think we've got almost everybody to make it through this. That was See something. Wow. This is right in your wheelhouse, Dan. Oh, a bunch of drunks on the street. This is where I'm at. <laughs> but you also have teams who are playing to make their season, while Memphis and SMU have been right in the middle of this division fight. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where were you last night? You were at SmackDown last night. It will happen. I was in wrestling. Buffalo, New really? York with Friday Night SmackDown, and now I get a chance to be amongst the incredible drunks of Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah absolutely. Hey, we're going to have wow. some stone cold people in the middle of the ring later on tonight. Top rank main, about the main event for the WBC Junior Welterweight title. Miguel Burchelt for the sixth time taking on JT Sosa, 10.30 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN app, and ESPN Deportes. You can almost see the set from here. Just about. Yeah. Hey, they the, showed up here. Yeah, they did. Uh, they see, did. look, people, look at that one. They showed up. Yeah. This is awesome. You know what? Here, but we've got David Pollock who has the Pizza Hut home team fan. Oh, nice. Hey, Memphis has got it cooking, not just in football, but obviously in college basketball. But how about some stars over here? Jaron Jackson, John ja Morant. How about the city, man? How about this? I mean, this scene, this is sick. Let's go, Green! Hey, we're turned up all the time. That's how it is. So, you know, I'm just hyped to see everybody out here. It feels like Obama came or something, something like that. <laughs> Well, welcome to the city. What you think? Uh, it's crazy. Um, definitely a great showing for us, and just show what type of city we have here in the lovely show. All right. So, so if, we, if we're if we're talking about the crowd and we're talking about football, you you would be the QB and just throw it up, throw a jump ball up, stand up. Yeah. Hey. Stand up, by the way, look look at this. Like, I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> Let's go get it. I catch it and throw it, man. I tell you what, it's a great scene. They got to cook in every part of the city. That's a couple of really good cornerstones for the Grizzlies. Yeah. Show with John Moran, who is a remarkably creative guy, and Jaron Jackson. Mayhem begins. The college football playoff top 25 ranking show, Tuesday at 9 on ESPN. Nobody is going to confuse Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium with the Rose Bowl. And that's okay, because while it isn't a granddaddy, it is a proud parent of a few things the Rose Bowl never had. The Liberty Bowl has Coach Bear Bryant and all of the houndstooth memories that come with his three appearances on South Hollywood Street. Bryant won the final game of his career, and he won it at the Liberty Bowl. Less than a month later, he was gone. This is the same stadium where the Minister of Defense preached the power of the sack. Reggie White played there as a Tennessee ball and later as a Memphis showboat. Reggie White, the Minister of Defense, may have put the death down. The Liberty Bowl is where the Tennessee Oilers relocated for a season before becoming the Titans in Nashville. And even the King himself visited the stadium for a 1975 World Football League game. For all of this, Liberty Bowl would like to say thank you. Thank you very much. Liberty Bowl is going to be sold out. First time since 2015. It is going to be electric. Some tailgating already going on over there. You kind of basically head due west from where we are through the banks of the Mississippi. That's where the they don't mess around with that tailgating now. They're getting ready early. You know what? There are some great moments. Gene got most of them, but the biggest moment in Liberty Bowl history is just oh, right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at oh, the yeah. yeah. pads. So, sophomore. Oh, you know, oh, you know, oh, you know how we rolled at, back in the at, day? Wait, look at four. Is that Horseman? Horseman, kid. <laughs> yeah. 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 And Desmond, I need you to break down uh, Kirk's return skills. Oh, oh, man. Look at See how he's dragging himself with his back arm, trying to make turns? Yeah, man. Don't go down. Don't go down easy, boy. Look at that. Look what happened. Showed up, not ready to play. Yeah, like, boy, Air Force beat Ohio State. Glad yeah. I was kicking returns and holding PATs as a freshman. You, Nothing to do with that loss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good, wow. that was great when, shot. When bowl season comes around, yes. and he starts talking, you know, he gets mad Take, at the players yeah. who don't want to go. I'm gonna go. 
the Air Force. Force. 1990. Yeah, <laughs> <Air> Force. <laughs> yeah. It's a good point. You were South Florida then, right? Uh, red shirt. Red, red shirt. Red shirt. Yeah. Ready to go there. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, introducing the newest honorary <laughs> member of the College Football Hall of Fame. It is a Goodyear blimp. Goodyear is more driven. Much more coming on that game and much more on SMU and Memphis. Football welcoming in SMU and here on Field Street, the heartbeat of the city goes with the music. And today it's football carrying the vibe. Penny Hardaway is going to join us a little bit later on in the show as well. Memphis basketball coach. You know, we have a good idea which teams are going to be in the initial top four of the college football selection committee rankings on Tuesday. Who's in for now? You might be in a little trouble when Rinaldi comes back. Amazing story of Memphis running back Kenneth Gainwell and the bond that he shares with his brother and lc has to make the headgear pick will it be mustangs or tigers and memphis legend jerry the king lawler will be here jerry better not be half stepping he's going to call him <laughs> the <laughs> king in elvis's city that's you right bring it look at that. behind look at that. our set it just keeps going oh, and going and going, going and going, going. And wow going. Oh, love you, Memphis. Love you. You know how far back that is before it fits yeah. out. Yeah, that's like five blocks. It's a long that's way back. Outstanding. There you go, LC. Oh. LC. <laughs> I'll see LC with the grill. With the grill. <laughs> type of grill here with Chef Theodore Hushuma and Clifford Parson for Miss Gurley's Soul Food, the Home Depot game day tailgate. They're cooking up a traditional game day recipe, smoked meat getting done. Some ribs and the signature butter roll. You can see more from Miss Gurley's and other great restaurants in Memphis on True South, Sunday, December 1st, 7.30 Eastern Time. That is on the SEC Network. Man, look at the banks of the big muddy right here. It's a, it's now check out, you had one job, some hijinks. Uh, maybe you just point the camera to the crowd out there, Paul and Pat. But they, I mean, that might be able to, to give you some and just material. Try, try to figure out where we're at out here, but look at it. Today they did their job. But let's take a look at some clips. When you look, when you look at this, by the way, guys, it's this is fun every single week. The kicking game, Pat. You're welcome. Punt, deep, deep punt down the field, right? Get out the way. Yeah, what? Uh, this way, that way. Uh, you don't know which way to go. Where am I going? Hey, sometimes whenever you see a majestic punt, you can get lost. You have no clue where to go. You turn left. You turn right. That ain't good at night, especially for Tuzzy returning the rock. Yes, definitely didn't know which way we were going. How do you tackle that, by the way, when you're playing defense? But how about Buccaneers and Titans? J Jameis Winston's got this right. What? Ooh. I've seen the Ooh. jet sweep. How about the handoff inside? Who gets credit for the tackle on this play? Well, I think it should be the entire Buccaneers organization. You had one job. I don't think it is taking your guys' legs out, especially on the six-yard line, looking for a win. Yeah, that's not it. Hey, Rockets. Rockets home. Little hoops love. James Hart about to get the shot up. No, oh, time oh. runs out. And bam! Oh! Oh, look at look at the look he gets right there. Harden slams the ball on the floor. Listen. Every once in a while, you Hart better pick up going. ball to the mouth. Josh Hart's like, that's the best defense I can play on that dude. All right, we got LSU Auburn. What's going on here? What's going on here? Yeah, what's the next play? Hey, coach. Coach, look at the sideline. Coach. Oh, man oh. down. Man him down. I think he popped cat. a hammy, possibly tore his ACL. One of the most brutal, gruesome injuries I've ever seen on a football field. Terrible injury. I don't know what's going to happen to him, but how about this? This is pretty cool, actually. This is Halloween. And this oh. is Lee Corso oh. following Joey McQuarrie. How about that? I'll tell you what, anytime you can dress oh. up like a legend, you got to feel good about it. Oh, Coach Corso, man. you look damn good as a kid. That is You Had One Job presented by Geico with all the fans, all the craniness, and Lee 
Corso. You end it with brightness. I think what you do is you send it back to the main stage with a beautiful shot of Beale Street being alive since 4 a.m. 901. 901. You know what all these people are doing out here on Beale Street might make it a little, a little tough to get their daily workout in. Yeah. A little bit. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> Guys like this would take these people and work them over in their neck, like Alex Spanos and Jake Rodell at LSU. But, you know, fans start casting their eyes for the coaching carousel these days. You need to find guys like this. Heart psychologists and dudes who can get you to move 600 on the trap bar and move it fast. Explode on the split squad. And that is why we have Gene Mochahowski here to find those guys. Reese, quick story. January 1977, winter conditioning drills early in the Johnny Majors era at Tennessee. We report to the indoor facility. We see the student managers putting out garbage cans. We're all looking at each other. Well, it doesn't really seem that dirty in here. I don't need, know why they need those things. Then we realized they weren't for garbage. They were for our vomit for that workout. And that's when we realized the strength and power of a strength coach. Aaron Feld, he can bench press 500 pounds, and he's had that spectacular mustache for about three years. But he told his team, Reese, that if they win the national championship, he is shaving that baby off. And he says he can see a day when a strength coach could become a head coach. But, Gene, in many respects, I, I'm sort of distracted by that need bear money sign. Right beside, <laughs> beside <laughs> but, you know, in many respects, David Shaw alluded to this, Perk. The, the strength coach is sort of like a head coach for most well, of the It's because the strength coach is the only guy with NCAA restrictions that can be with the players all year. So they know about they break up with a girlfriend, they fail a test, they have some issues going on back home. They are involved with these players, and they really get to know them intimately. In fact, a lot of the guys that go on to the NFL, they come back to visit the strength coach because they have that personal relationship. And, Des, in my opinion, you see a coach get a big-time hire, right. first guy yeah. he hires. Not an offensive coordinator, not a defense coordinator, strength coach. That's how important that position has become in modern college football. Yeah, really good piece by Jim because you can't overemphasize the uh, position of a strength coach. The head coach is the, head, the, the, the number one in charge, but the strength coach is the number two. It's not even a shadow of a doubt. When I was in Michigan, Bo was the guy. He was the head coach. But Mike Gittleson, the strength coach, he was the guy that anytime Bo had a problem, he sent you to Mike Gittleson. Mike Gittleson was the guy who you spent the type of time with, who you told your personal problems, but he also punished you. So anytime yeah. you had an issue, yeah. Mike Gittleson was the guy to see, coach. My athletic director, Paul Dietzel from LSU, Hired by Johnny Parker, my conditioning coach, my third, third year. He's the reason I lasted seven more years. He yeah. was that important to me. He did a great job my football team. It gives you a lot of confidence out there. Those guys know they can move the weight. They can get through all of that stuff, and they can perform on the field on Saturday. Got much more coming on College Game Day. Ryan Day is going to join us in just a little bit. You see this tremendous scene here on Beale Street as we are now uh, inside two hours until the start of your college football Saturday. Noon on ABC. Coke Zero Sugar counting us down to kickoff. And Michigan cleats already. <laughs> you know, the whole outlook and demeanor is better after that performance against Notre Dame. Yeah, he's got a little smirk there. We'll get yeah. off the bus. <laughs> they take on Maryland at noon on SEC Network. Jimbo Fisher, Texas A&M taking on Texas San Antonio. They still got a couple of big games later yeah. on this year. They got, got LSU against coming Georgia out and LSU yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. To try to put some exclamation points on that resume. And not far away, I think Memphis is going to like this. How about Penny Hardaway, number one recruiting class in America? You know what they were saying in our college basketball seminar this week? What? Can Memphis go undefeated? Wow. Oh, wow. That's how talented, I know Penny wow. doesn't want to hear that. Oh, wow. That's how talented this Tiger basketball wow. team is. Football, basketball, feeding on each other and building yeah. excellence in Memphis. Speaking of excellence, number one against number two, we think we'll see how the CFP ranks them. The Tide and the Tigers look ahead. Kirk already told you. I think we're probably going there next week. <laughs> and we're just, <laughs> the story of why the phrase I got to bro carries such meaning to Kenny Gamewell. I was telling him, man, I always dirty. Just know I got you. Just remember, 
I always play ball. We're gonna make sure we get out of here. It's still up to this day, I always tell them that. I always got you, bro. No matter what. Look forward to that story. And for our fans at home, stay tuned for more Pizza Hut game day traditions later in the show. Guys together, we can do anything. But let's not forget to be tidy and pick up after ourselves. Who's with me? You can't have a halftime speech without the head coach. No? All right. And you can't have football without the hut. I'm a... How about that? <laughs> they are ranked that puts first it. time since uh, right before the death penalty, 1980. Then, oh, Memphis, the only ranked team in the state of Tennessee. With a little orange. You. A little shot at the ball yeah, was. there. The best they could. It is now time for our Pizza Hut game day traditions. And this is a great football city you see now, but it is also deeply entrenched with basketball. And the great Penny Hardaway really elevated his game as a player, went on to a great NBA career, and now has taken Memphis and has elevated the recruiting, sort of building it in his image, in his likeness of when Memphis had high-end talent competing to go to Final Fours, win conference championships. And Penny Hardaway, the head coach of the Memphis Tiger basketball team with Pat McAfee. Reese, that's right, right here in the middle of Beale Street. As soon as this legend showed up, the place started chanting, Penny, Penny, you're a Memphis native. You invest in this city. You have a barber shop here. You've been the head coach now for two years. You have the number one recruiting class going into this year. How do you sell players on Memphis and how important sports is to this beautiful city? Well, it's because of this right now, our fans. You know, our fans are incredible. We have the best fans in the world. So when you have a kid come here and see this, it sells itself. So with our staff, we know what we can do basketball-wise, but our fans sell our, sell our team for us. Memphis was once a very prominent basketball school. Now the football team gets going. What do you guys need to do to take that next step? You're in the NIT last year. This year, obviously, looking to do a lot more. What will the Memphis basketball team take that next step? Yeah, obviously, we're feeding off the energy from our football team. What an amazing day for our football team and our school. But for us to go forward, we have to play great basketball. You got to win. And, you know, we want to make it to the NCAA tournament and go as far as we can go. When I talked to Coach, uh, Coach Norvell, whenever we had a Thursday night game here, he said sports are vital to the success of this city. I assume that's something that you take with a lot of pride, being a Memphis native. Absolutely. You know, this is a sports town. You know, absolutely, we're excited today. Our football team is doing amazing things, the basketball and the other sports in our school. So as we go, that's how the city goes. Hey, I'm going for the Tigers. Oh! G-E-R-S, Tigers! Tigers basketball head coach, Penny Hardaway. Reese, let's go back to you, boss man. Beale Street is lit. They're going to be ready to see James Wiseman and the rest of that great freshman class that Penny has. It, almost certain to go to the uh, to the NCAA tournament. You're already in basketball mode there. Exactly. You got the right. seminar in, right. you're breaking you're names down. You're like gonna, a point you're guard. Gonna, he's going to have to be in it, too. You're coming up to the yeah, start to see Tuesday James night. Classic for yeah. the first the release of the college football playoff rankings, which is a little bit different than basketball, where they put together 68 teams. You gotta be in the final four just to get in the show in the college football playoff. And you know, we've got some new members in the committee. That's why sometimes I don't think looking back and looking at the history of how they've done it before is necessarily that instructive because you have different people with different agendas and different things that they value that go into that committee room. You see the number of new faces that will be in this 13-person committee for the 2019 season. So you look at the top 10 in the country right now and the team's ranked at the top four. Pretty good bet, that is. Let's go. <laughs> a lot of football. That's what's going on. You know, nice you know how many, yeah. how many uh, SEC haters are just praying that maybe the SEC gets left out? All of them. Yeah. Uh, no, no, you don't. More likely no, to get you two teams in. Yeah. Hey, you're much more you, likely to get two teams in. You, you guys know where we're going next week. Yeah, let's I think we're uh, going to head over to Kirk, Tuscaloosa. Kirk said we're going to Tuscaloosa. Yeah. <laughs> it's done. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say next Saturday. We knew that in August. Number one, number two in the polls. We'll see where they're ranked by the selection committee coming up on Tuesday night. College game day, 9 a.m. Eastern time. <laughs> they do what, Bama? In women's, women's soccer. soccer. You know what you want? You want to check out Nick Saban, the ESPN Plus detailed groundbreaking sports analysis program. Take a look. Again, what looms ahead for his powerful team and motivation can come in any number of ways. For Memphis running back Kenny Gamewell, it's thinking about his big brother, Curtis. Every time I score a touchdown, so every time, every time I even think about it when I'm on the field, it just, 
It just come all out. It just explodes out of me. Hey, I'm expecting a little more when we show Kenny Gamewell on there, people. Memphis Beale Street is rocking. College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, is brought to you by Pizza Hut, official pizza of college football. Order now at PizzaHut.com. No one out pizzas the hut. I don't know if anybody's walking in Memphis like the Peabody Ducks and the honorary Duck Master, Lee Corso, which in a related story, else he's going to pick Oregon to beat SC. Guaranteed. Have to live with those Peabody Ducks for a while. That's right, man. The Memphis tradition. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest. Goodyear is more driven. Uh, tonight in Memphis, over at the Liberty Bowl, about five miles or so from where we sit, it'll be SMU and the Tigers. SMU ranked 15th undefeated. Memphis with a single loss. Herbie and Fowler have it for you at 7.30 Eastern time. You know, Memphis had a thousand-yard rusher coming back this year. Patrick Taylor sort of gliding with his feet, 10 feet off of Beal. But Patrick Taylor missed seven games with a foot, and Kenneth Gainwell has lived up to his name. Tom Rinaldi joins us, and Tom, Gainwell is accustomed to stepping up and playing for someone who can't. Reese, this week, Memphis running back coach Anthony Jones was getting ready to talk to reporters. Before he was asked a single question, he made a statement. Kenneth Gainwell is awesome. Hard to argue. Leads the nation in yards gained from scrimmage as a redshirt freshman. But if you're looking to appreciate the power of that performance, understand its source. Another Gainwell with the power to inspire. It's the yard. Put all the work in right here. Every day, we're playing ball. Every day, playing ball. It was a humble training ground and their common ground. Every morning, every night, no breaks. Where one brother helped shape another, just not in the way either imagined. It was just making me want to go harder, harder, every drive, every play, every game, no matter how hard it was, he was always there. Growing up in Yazoo County, Mississippi, Curtis, Kenny, and Corey Gainwell played everything, all the time, against each other. Oh, we real competitive. Believe that. You can look at a couple holes in the wall and tell they're competitive. <laughs> oh, man. It was a lot of fights. <laughs> I can tell you that. But Curtis, he was like the one like always show us the ropes and like made sure we did everything right. After graduating from high school in 2013, Curtis went to Southern Miss hoping to walk on to the football team. He was lifting weights there that September when his life changed. I had a headache. I didn't feel good that day. I knew there was something wrong, but I didn't know it was going to be a stroke. He was in ICU, and what he had was a serious bleed to the brain. 18 years old, Curtis would endure three brain surgeries in one day by the time his family could see him. I just seen just like my baby was there and couldn't move. If I didn't get to the hospital in time, I could have been gone. Could have been gone. It just scared me, really, to just see him on the bed after all the things that we went through what had we had done as little kids and it was up in the room on the seventh floor i was telling him man i always heard this just know i got you i always got you bro no matter what having survived curtis's recovery would be slow hard and long he had to learn how to walk again how to talk everything. He just went all the way back to a newborn baby. 
I went to therapy like Monday through Friday, like when I'm going to work. I'm talking about every day. He always sending me videos on the phone, showing me what he was doing. He was trying to push himself to like get back right. I guess his grind was just like my grind. The big brother in recovery would challenge the little brother on the field and in the yard as Kenny became a prep star in Mississippi. How did you push him? By looking at it right there in his eyes, they say, bro, I feel my pain. And you know what he said? I feel it, bro. I saw you in that bed. I want to get out of that bed and walk. He would make us just come out there early in the morning, go from the tire to the ladder, straight from the ladder to some weights, because he was my motivation. Knowing that he wasn't gone, he could have been gone. Curtis is still here, with a limp, limited on his right side. And that's the motivation Kenny's carried with him from Mississippi to Memphis. And the inspiration he used this season to make history. As the first player in 22 years with 200 yards receiving and 100 yards rushing in a single game. My brother stroke made me work hard as I could. Every time I even think about it when I'm on the field, it just explodes out of me. He said, bro, everything that I do out there on that field, everything I do, bro, I dedicate it to you. It's the same thing. I got you, bro. I always have your back. No matter what, I got you. Curtis Gainwell Jr. has endured four brain surgeries in all, and he's still fighting. He went back to school at Heinz Junior College in Mississippi and last year graduated with a two-year degree. He hopes to go back to school to become a sports reporter, and he and the Heinz family will be where they've been at every home game at the Liberty Bowl, there to cheer on Kenny. The last call Kenneth Gainwell will make before he goes into the Liberty Bowl, Reese, it'll be to Curtis Jr., I got you, bro. And Tom, one thing Mike Morvell does is have his players to see him put a picture of their families in their locker to remind them of who they play for. As Pat McAfee joins us, and Pat, I, you've seen both of these teams. We turn our attention to what Gamewell's going to face against SMU. SMU hasn't been competitive in this series recently. They've lost five in a row, all by double figures. What do you expect in this? Yeah, SMU is a very different team. I mean, bringing in Shane Bouchel is a massive transformation for that Mustang organization. I mean, they got 31 transfers in there, all of that. But with this Memphis Tiger team, and the story right there was absolutely beautiful by Tom Rinaldi, Kenneth Gainwell is a guy that they trust. I mean, he leads the American Conference in yards from scrimmage. He's an absolute stud. The Heisman conversation is a real one, especially here on Beale Street in Memphis, Tennessee. But they'll split them out. They have him in the backfield. Yeah. He is really a do-it-all for them, and Brady White has really trusted him and taken advantage of his incredible abilities. Yeah, he thought Patrick Taylor was hurt. Their running game might suffer, and it did not, but that's been a staple of the offense. Sea of humanity. B.B. <laughs> King perfected his craft here. This is where he got started. Elvis, the king of rock and roll. They know how to express themselves in Memphis. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I saw Hannah Montana in concert right before, you know. Oh, they still hate something, really? hey, something you should say on TV. They still, still hate California. Yeah. Yeah. Like take, take Bama in basketball. Yeah. yeah. Hey. What year is that oh. picture from? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Good call. Good call. <laughs> Our coach is hotter than yours. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Now we're from near my hometown, a couple hours away from here. And oh, morning. Oh, morning. Oh, uh oh. That's who you hit with the players before that. <laughs> Ahead of the game, ahead of the game. All right, with all due respect, uh, uh -huh. Aaron Dickerson, that's the king, man. Yeah. Blue suede shoes. Well, well who's got them rolling today? Who, hey, who don't does step in our D's blue suede shoes. Everybody, everybody likes dry rubs. I mean, the ribs, Rondeville are unbelievable. 
Mm. Very good. You know John Burgess, the co-owner of Rendezvous, is an SMU grad? No. Really? But he's, he's, a, Memphis, he's a Memphis fan. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 There we go. That, that go might ahead, be what's known as foreshadowing. Hopefully he's going to go as a guest picker. Stay tuned. Stephen Waller's coming as a guest picker. Home Depot Pro Customer of the Week. Alex Craig from CD Properties is game day traditions built here in the Flip City of Memphis, Ooh. Tennessee. Ohio State has that to be able to go against NC State. NC State starting freshman. That's, that's code for we're not telling you what we're doing. We already know. Bulldogs real little to the hype. And speaking of hype, Jerry the King Waller, the wrestling legend and great Memphian, will be our celebrity guest picker. <laughs> Whoever loses is out. To me, Florida State wins this game because they got the two best players, offensively and defense. A lot of big brain humans in the college football world said, hey, this team's going to make them. It's going to be an incredible showcase tonight. He is so fired up. Both Mike Loxley and, and Josh Caddis, who worked together last year at Alabama, fired up to face each other today. I noticed we didn't have a shot of them hugging or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza Hut fan cam taking you right down Beale Street. This party is on and getting ready for the match with SMU coming up later on. Now there might be strong yeah, very very rare. We're gonna go with the we're gonna go against the public public underdog. There you go. Don't That's the biggest thing. Okay. Against the public. Yes. Exactly. Public right. jumps yeah. on the other side. Yeah. Everybody yeah. likes Florida. The hair jumps hey, on the other side. Look, I'm not trying to fire him up. You are. But if not go if not now, when? You must be for Georgia. Yeah. Really like Georgia today. <laughs> go Gators. Go <laughs> Gators. Game, SMU in Memphis. Memphis makes its living on chunk plays, top two in the nation, 40 and 50 yard plays, but so does SMU. Yep. They get defensive sacks and cause negative plays. Perfect game for a city that <laughs> likes to live on the edge, the edge of the Mississippi River, the edge of music. This is gonna be a mashup, and whatever happens tonight ain't on the sheet music. Whoever is supposed to team, I feel like we can score whenever we get it. Our guys have made plays, competitive plays on the football, and you got to do the same thing Saturday. I heard that, you know, they're going to press a little man, and, you know, we're just ready for it. Third and 16, another sack, and it's Nelson again. We get very physical. We get after the quarterback. I would describe this as some tough, hard workers. We're not the most athletic, not the biggest, not the strongest, but we do our job well. We can't let up. We can't have no turnovers. We have to make sure that if we up, stay up. We know the challenge that's at stake, but we also know who we are. <laughs> SMU has added a running attack to that Sunny Dykes passing attack, but they have not fared well against the Tigers. Last five meetings, Memphis, <laughs> everything, 51 points a game. Every game has been decided by double figures, but you think the Mustangs have Yeah, but this is a different S SMU team. This is one of the best all-around teams in the country. They're fifth in the nation in scoring offense. On defense, they cause turnovers, and they play well on the special teams. Poor old SMU. 
they don't have they have very little chance against this Memphis team and the 60,000 people here no in the shot. stand. No, There's shot. no, no shot. No shot at all. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> well, you know, I think this, this game potentially has a chance kind of the offense is going back and forth because Memphis offense can score. Brady White, their quarterback, is in command of this offense, and he's got some playmakers all around, led by 19 Kenneth Gainwell. This against Navy. This kind of tells you the experience of the quarterback. First play of the game, he sends his blitz from the field, gets out of the play that's off to the right. He's going to check to the left because he knows he's got the matchup that he wants. The numbers are right, and he's got a back that can hit it and stick his foot in the ground. In one cut, he gets into the open field. You saw Tom Rinaldi's feature on him earlier, and he runs with great, great passion. Here again, just an awareness by Brady White. He sees six. He only has five. He brings the tight end in, gets a little trick. They fake the blitz, but he's, most importantly, he sees that he still has man-to-man -man with Gibson, who's one of his favorite targets, up against the safety. That's the experience of a veteran quarterback seeing that, hey, I got a safety trying to stay with my guy on a post. I'm going to take this all day. So watch 14 today. If he gets matched up favorably against a safety, they'll try to get him the ball downfield. This is something very unusual. A running back that lines up at receiver. Gainwell, 19, will do that. He's a back, but he's versatile enough where he doesn't just motion out. He'll line up yeah. as a receiver. It's kind of a rare talent, but I think SMU defensively, it's feast or famine. They, yeah. They're either going to blitz you <laughs> right. and get home and exactly. second in the nation, yes, sir. or it's, they're going to give up touchdowns. So and that's, that's, what, and that's, that's what I love about this defense. I yeah. mean, when Memphis offense is on the field, they're going to have to deal with a very aggressive defense by the Mustangs. Let me show you exactly what you're going to see tonight when SMU is on defense. Stay tuned when it comes to tackles for loss. And number four in the nation is sacks. This group is a very aggressive group. I love the way they play defense. Yeah, and their offense is just as aggressive. I mean, this SMU offense is a lot of fun. Dude, Shane Michelle is bombs away, okay? <laughs> they, they know the deep ball is, is the best in the country that I've seen. It's unbelievable. So Memphis better be ready to go tick for tack. It's going to be a high-scoring game. Well, and remember, SMU, as we said right at the top of the show, not going to have Reggie Robertson, who's big their ball. guy it's who can take deal. the top yeah. off. Yeah. There, you got, you got a pick on this? He had 250, by the way, versus yeah. Temple. 250, yeah. 31 yards a catch. I think that's a big deal. And then I think Memphis having game well, SMU not having a great run game, I think Memphis wins at home because of this game. I mean, I mean this yeah. is the better SMU team that they've had in the last five years, but still. Memphis has won five straight, and they're in the series, all of a sudden up by double digits. This is a Memphis team that's been really dominant in, in that building. I think mean, Memphis, win, I mean, Memphis win by double digits tonight. Double digits! Double digits! Double digits! Oh, 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 7.30 Eastern on ABC, Herbie and Fowler are having it. And look who's here for our celebrity guest picker. Jerry the King Lawler. He's Batman. Here he comes. It's a nice ride. Batman. It's a nice ride. Look at that car. That's how you roll into college game day as a celebrity picker right there. Hey. When you're the king, you do whatever you want. king. Guess what's going to be sitting in Herb Street's garage next week? <laughs> Uh, Zach would love that. Better win the Derby or the... <laughs> the king, the king. College Game Day is built by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Sounds a lot like just a hint of that's all right, mama. The king of <laughs> rock and roll. Home of Elvis Presley. Why are we in this scene? Man? Aerial coverage provided Insane. by Goodyear. The best part of every kickoff the drive that comes next. Go further with Goodyear. It's more driven. I love the flip shots because you can get a magnitude. The Pac-12 later you tonight. It's so you, you're so fired up. I'm, I'm that. watching that game. <laughs> <laughs> All the games today. We don't even care I'm about the Saturday it. selection. Brought to you by Coors Light. I would imagine the Coors Light may be completely <laughs> empty behind us here on Beale Street. Our celebrity guest picker. Well, yeah, John. Where were we Goodman. last week? Where were we last week? South Dakota. I was, we in South Dakota. Who, we, our picker didn't even make the board there. No, he didn't. Oh, we didn't have it. Yeah. Hey, look at this guy. But this week, Jerry the King Lawler. 
proud native of Memphis, one of the great performers in the history of the World Wrestling Entertainment. Uh -huh. Two kings. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's it. It's nice having you with this king. This is awesome. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're going to find out which is the real king here. <laughs> I think we both are. I think that's the other guy. When Tommy West was fired at the oh. he told the administration, invest in football or give it up. SMU was forced to give up football once. But my, how the fortunes have turned on this grand stage in Memphis tonight. You got a big spotlight on us. You know, people dream of it. I just feel chill going right now, just sitting in the stadium. I know we're here. When Tiger Nation shows up, it's a very fun place to play. It should be amazing. SMU's perfect New Year's Six birth potentially at stake. Who wins the game? SMU or Memphis? I tell you what, Brady White as a quarterback does not get enough credit for what he's doing on the field. He has tremendous weapons around him. I like what Noe is doing here. I'm going Memphis Tigers. Yeah. 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 Coach Torso, I'm going to take you back in time. Remember when you were coaching Louisville yeah. against Billy Spook Murphy coaching the Tigers? Yes, sir. And at the end of that game, you had to wave the white flag. Yes, I did. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you this white flag. I want you to give it to Coach Dykes because he's going to need to wave the white flag. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Can you believe that? Oh, man. Wait a minute. That was good. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. You're... Uh-oh. Oh, wait a minute. What happened to the king? Yeah. It is a serious business, my friend, you know. Yeah. 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 SMU is undefeated, nationally ranked with a terrific key. But Vegas has them six-point underdog to the great Memphis team. Yes. Yes. I see no reason that I'm going against Vegas. No. Hand me that to Yes. Yes. Oh. Put you in a chokehold, kid. <laughs> Thanks to Memphis here. What a great oh, one on time.